I guess I'll start with an, uh, an opening okay. question, sir. Um, been a terrific week for your team. We saw them, uh, saw them at the theme parks. And we saw them visiting Give Kids the World. And right. I know they've also been working really hard for you as right. well. Can you talk about the bowl preparation since you've right. been here? Well, doing it as many years as I've done it, I think it's really important for the players to enjoy where you're at. I want them to have a good time. Even when we were back home, you know, we were practicing during the time when the rest of the campus is gone. So by rule, you know, you're allowed to provide some, you know, reasonable entertainment for the guys. So even, even when we were home, we got the, we were working hard at the, during the times it was time to work, whether it was in the weight room or whether it was in the meeting room or on the practice floor. But then we set up opportunities to uh, go to a Miami Heat basketball game and uh, go bowling one time. There's a place called Game Time nearby uh, where they got a chance to do a little bit of that. There's a couple nights. They could, you know, go to a movie if they chose to. Um, then we had a pretty awesome kickball tournament one day to kind of break up the monotony of the practice and had, you know, like a family picnic afterwards. So we did all those things before we got here, and then we came here to Orlando, and there's so many wonderful things for our guys to be able to do. It's, it's, it's great. And, uh, it's like I told the guys. You know, just a lot of great things to do during the day. So do them, enjoy them. Some of the guys, it's probably the first time they got to do some of these things. And then, you know, when it comes to nighttime, nighttime's for sleeping. Hmm. Nighttime's for getting rest. And uh, our, our players have done a really nice job of being in the rooms when they're supposed to be, and where they're supposed to be. So um, I'm pleased with the preparation. And um, it's been, you know, the weather was awesome. The, uh, Celebration High School was a great place for us to practice, and everybody was uh, very accommodating. In the spirit of fairness, I'll ask you, similar to what I asked Coach Holgerson, while you were practicing out at Celebration, did some thoughts run through your mind about some of the seniors you've come to know this year, and right. if this is their last game? Yeah, you know, uh, just being there one year, being at Miami one year, I didn't get to know the seniors as much as you would if you Got them when they were 17 or 18, recruited them, and spent all, of, all that time with them. I mean, I, I've been very blessed in my career to be 15 years at Florida State and 15 years at Georgia. So I really enjoyed the process of, of meeting a guy when maybe he's in the ninth or 10th grade and you begin that relationship, and before you know it, he decides to sign at your school. And you get to see him go from a you know, a young guy, usually a little bit of a knucklehead to a mature man ready to handle life. And, uh, you know, this group of seniors in partic particular were special to me because I know how hard it can be for a group of guys that are kind of set in their ways and all of a sudden their last year they have to, there's change, maybe more change than they were hoping for. And, um, you know, but, you know, I asked them from the very beginning to, to, to trust me, to trust us as a staff. And, and you know, let them know that the best chance we have of success in your senior season is if everybody buys in. They've been just fantastic in that way and uh, really proud of them. And then, you know, there's always the last practice at, you know, Miami. And then the last practice, uh, you know, here at the bowl site. Of course, we had the last practice during the regular season earlier in the year. The last game at Hard Rock Stadium. You know, so there's so a lot of the last times for these guys. And, you know, there'll be a time uh, tonight where I'll, where I'll uh, address the team. And um, it'll be kind of the last time I'll have a chance to really talk about life with those guys as a group before they take off. So that it's, uh, it's a very meaningful time. We hope you have many years of maturing kids. Yeah, the hope University so. Of Miami. Questions, please. Right over here. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Um, Miami is a very uh, prominent school, and uh, it's been 10 years since you guys won a bowl game. Um, do you guys, uh, as a team, uh, feel any added pressure to live up to the moniker right. of the U and bring prominence back to the university? Well, I think everybody wants to be great. I think I think a lot of guys came to Miami because of the tradition, the football tradition that's been established there. It's part of the reason why I'm back. I mean, I'm back partially because it's my alma mater, but more, more than that, it's a, it's a team and a place that history has proven that you could be great there.
And so, yeah, that, that, that means a lot to us. And, uh, you know, we want to be who we are, and we're not trying to be somebody, you know, from the past, but, you know, I think what we're striving for is excellence in everything we do. And if we, if we do that in, in all areas, as coaches, as players, and administrators, and everybody, then we'll, we'll be as prominent as we've been in, in days past, and that's, that's what we're all excited about in the future. Right here, please. Coach, what was your overall thoughts of your offense this year, knowing that this is your first year as a head coach? Right. So what was your overall of the offense? Oh, gosh. You know, you always watch film and see what could have been. You know, I think when you're a coach, you're probably more critical than anybody. Um, you know, so were we perfect by any means? No. But, you know, I think as the season went, went on, I did a better job of really understanding our personnel and the things that they could do and trying to get the playmakers in position to make plays. And, um, you know, overall, it was solid, not spectacular in my opinion. I think there's, I think the best is yet to come, but um, it was a good start. It was a good start. All right. Coach, um, you've been around for a while and you've seen players have to deal with decisions whether to leave early to go to the NFL or stuff like that. Is there a way in your mind, having gone through this so many times, to make it easier on the player? Is right. there something that should be done maybe so that they don't receive their grades or maybe yeah. after bowl games so you don't have to put them under that little added pressure well, going into these games? I don't know if you could do that um, because, first of all, when the regular season ends until the bowl game, there's, that's a lot of time. And, and to, to think that a guy is not going to think about those things, it's really not very realistic. And there's also a time from the end of the regular season until the first bowl practice. And, uh, you know, there's exams going on and things of that nature, but you know that's going to be crossing their mind and everything. So what I did first off is establish who is seriously considering uh, turning pro underclassmen, just to establish that and then just tell them, tell them how I'm going to go about it as a head coach. And for me, the goal is always to educate them the best we possibly can with, with real solid NFL information, strict, strictly business information, how people see you in the league, and very, very honest uh, evaluations. There's an evaluation committee that's important. And also, over the years, you get contacts with people in the league through a lot of different ways. I mean, I've got guys that are pro scouts that I that I coached back at Florida State, you know. So I, mean, I have a lot of contacts uh, within the business, and so I'll ask them, you know, would you mind telling me how you see these guys? And, and I'll tell our players how they feel about that. And um, sometimes I'll wait until the end of the game, but um, depending on how fast the information comes back, I think if you could tell them, you know, 10 days before or whatever, before, I, I, I'm not big on telling the guy two or three days before the game. But, uh, you know, this year in particular, the committee information came back relatively quick. And so, uh, and I also had some other opinions that I at least let them know uh, what people think. Because I think if they, if they go by what some people say in the media, who's going to be a first round pick and all that, there, on average there's about 90 to 100 guys that are picked or, or projected to go in the first round, there's only 32 slots. So sometimes if they read the newspaper and they're like, oh, well, they say I'm going in the first round, it may not be true. The other thing is to be, you know, be careful um, not to put too much credence into uh, what other outside influences might be saying. Let's just get the direct information from the NFL. And then, you know, from there, uh, you try to make a decision for, you know, what's best for you. Everybody's got different situations, whether it's, you know, a home situation or, um, you know, whatever it may be. We'll talk about the value of staying, you know, because, you know, leaving with your degree in hand, I think, is big. I think being able to play on a championship team, you know, possibly in the future is big. You know, some guys are, you know, very, they have a realistic shot at some national awards and things of that nature. So we, I'll ask them, you know, what are the pros of staying? You know, what, are the, what are the pros of going? And, uh, what could be the cons in either one, in either one of those, and then just let them go with whoever they trust the most and talk about it, pray about it, and come out with an answer. Most of the times, uh, I've had guys that wait till after the bowl to decide what to do. But if a guy knows for sure on the front end and he wants to say what it is, I'm, I'm fine with that too. But the big thing, I just want him to know that 
I'm not going to try to make him stay or make him feel guilty or whatever I want him to do what's best for him. And, but I do want him to make the decision based on real solid information. Left front row, that decision. Coach, it was mentioned a little earlier, just some of the University of Miami struggles in bowl games. Mm -hmm. uh, with your experience in bowl games throughout your career in coaching, was there anything that you told these players during the last right. 15 practices or so? I know some of the seniors have been to bowl games. But right. You've been able to tell them about their preparation. Well, the only thing I tell them is everything we do, um, We I think we had 11 practices. So... I told them every single practice that the, the main goal and function of the practice is to help prepare us to win the bowl game. It's not about preparing for next year. It's not about getting young guys and scrimmaging here and scrimmaging there. It's about, first of all, getting, getting back to fundamentals, okay? Blocking, tackling. People that don't bowl, you know, when you go to a bowl and you haven't played in a month, some guys lose their ability to tackle as well. Some guys lose their ability to block as well. So we worked hard on the fundamentals on the front end. And then as soon as we got about two or three days of that, we started game planning immediately. So we, we've been game planning this game longer than really, in the bowl time for me, it's, it's longer than any game of the season. So, you know, uh, I, I just tell them that the goal is to, when you're working, work hard, and, the, and, the, and everything we're doing is, is designed to get you prepared to, to have a chance to win this ball game, and that, that's the main thing for me. Coach, uh, you know, David had told us that you were waiting to tell the players their, I guess their grades or their results from the NFL advisory board mm -hmm. um, until after the game. Is that still true, or to have, has that been communicated to them? And, and then the other part would be kind of what you touched on a little. Um, mm -hmm. Did you also suggest to them a way to uh, you know, let us or let people know they are turning pro. Yeah. Tweet it after the game, a press conference. No, we didn't get into that. We didn't get into that. But um, but they, they know their NFL grades. He was probably trying to just, I don't know what he's trying to do, but, yeah, we, we this was a while back. We, we talked about the grades. But, the, you know, the issue is this. The issue is these guys want to finish well this season. Whether it's the last game or not, you know, that's up to them to decide. But, you know, if I'd have had them open to, I mean, this is all, this is, a, what, 25% of what everybody wants to ask. We're, we're getting ready to play a game. You know, that, I know it's important to everybody, uh, but right now it's not, it's not the thing that's most important to them, and that's to try to finish well and have a great game. So, I just, I like these guys to focus on the game, and they've asked me, Coach, I'd really like to, I'd like to focus on this game and finish well this season, and then we'll figure out what to do after that. Well, one other thing about the game itself. Um, the, the, is, I asked Dana Holgerson this. Is, is every victory you know, equal to you, being that this is the last game of the season? If you win this one, I don't know, does it mean a little more? What does it mean? Uh, they're all very meaningful. They really are. The longer I coach, the more I enjoy the locker room after a victory, I enjoy celebrating with the guys. Um, that in itself, for me, is, is worth all the work. When you see them jumping up and down and enjoying it and having fun. And, you know, people say that you know there's some meaningless bowl games. I, I mean, if you're in the locker room of a, of a winning team, I don't think you'd say that of any bowl game. Uh, and if you're in the losing locker room and you see the reaction. You would never say that game was meaningless to those guys. I mean, I think it's just, I get mad when people say it, quite frankly, because I think they don't get it. You know, most people that say that, um, well, I don't want to say anything about it, other than, other than the games are very meaningful. I mean, if you read the quotes from some of our seniors, you know, being asked the question, you know, would you think about just not playing in the bowl game? They're like, no way. I want to play with my teammates one more time. Adrian Colbert, our guy, busted up his arm, had a broken arm. You know, as soon as he, as soon as he got hurt, he, he asked Vinny, our trainer, you know, can I make it back for the bowl? Is there any possible way I can make it back for the bowl? And, and so that entire time as he's rehabbing, he's trying to make it back to this game because it meant so much to him to play his last game with his teammates. And uh, so these games are very meaningful, and uh, I just, I love the celebration. Left TV, right, sir. 
Hi, Coach. John W. Davis of News 13 here in Orlando. I'm missing you. Where I'm over here. Okay, hey, I see you. How you doing? Uh, with a you know, proud alumni base and, and fans, you know, what's the significance or the importance of having the Miami Bowl game in Orlando, just in the heart of the oh, state, yeah. where you can kind of touch awesome. all your fans, touch all your recruits, everything like that? No, it's big. It, it means a lot. We, we know how many great players there are in the state. We know how many fans we have in this state. And to be in a at a location that everybody can make it to, or a lot of people can make it to. Even everybody who's in Miami, this is not that far of a trek to come and see it. And anywhere in the state, we're in the heart of the state, so everybody can can get here if they choose to. Uh, recruits can get excited about that. Um, you know, I, I think it's, you know, um, and just the fact that, you know, we, we mentioned all the great players in the state, it's just, it's a, it's a nice buzz for your program. And certainly, you know, talking about winning the game and the significance of that, I mean, winning a game is huge uh, as far as just how people perceive your program. And, and when people start deciding who they want to rank preseason and all that, even though a lot of those polls aren't as meaningful as the ones in the end, uh, it, it, it still is something that, um, you know, when you're preseason ranked, it's a positive sign for your program. It's, it creates energy in recruiting. And, and, and with your fan base and everything else. So um, I think it's a big deal to, to play in the state. Plus, you know, the weather's beautiful. Coach, we're gonna stay in the front row here on the right. Sure. Um, Mark, you know, based on, you know, some of the back and forth between the players, it certainly wouldn't be a surprise if, you know, the game was a little chippy. As long as it's, you're not costing your team, are you okay with that? Can you make the game more exciting? Well, I like it when the blood, when the blood gets pumping. If that helps a guy get his blood pumping. That's good. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not into a bunch of trash talking and all that. I'm I'm, I'm into you know doing your job, and, and, but doing it with some energy. And if it creates a little energy, you know that's that's not the worst thing that can happen. But as you said, you don't want it to turn into some type of personal foul or, or even you know bigger. And, you know, it could be a bigger mess too if it gets way out of hand, but I, I don't anticipate that happening. I don't think that will happen. I mean, I don't. I, I've talked to a lot of our players about you know what happened, and I don't see anybody like it's just frothing at the mouth. You know, they're mad about whatever. I think they just—it's kind of typical kind of stuff. I, I don't think it was anything that big. Coach, um, West Virginia's offense can put up a lot of points and a lot of yards. Uh, what have uh, you and your coaches said, seen on the field, and how do you prep your defense to go against a, such a high octane offense uh, throughout right. the week? Well, you just have to, you know, Coach Diaz, is, he's very good at, at understanding what offensive teams are trying to accomplish. And you know, one of the things he does is, is try to take away the things that they love to do the most. and. Um, but when you have a, I mean, this is a veteran team we're playing. I mean, defensively, they got nine, I think eight seniors, and two juniors, and maybe a freshman in there. But uh, but the entire team is really a veteran team. And offensively, they, they've got dynamic receivers. You know, one's caught about 60 balls, another one's averaged 23 yards a catch and eight touchdowns. And, and uh, their quarterback is thrown for, I think, 26 TDs and run for nine. And, uh, you know, just uh, a lot of guys that can really good playmakers so you know number one you, you and they're very balanced in their run pass ratio so we, we like everybody says got to stop the run got to at least slow down the run discourage the run a little bit and, and if they can run the ball well and play action pass it's going to be a really long day for us you know if we can get some victories on the first down second down situation get them into the longer yardage situations maybe more predictable throwing situations, then you can start, you know, either decide to, you know, bring the heat or play coverage or, you know, however you want to do it. But the goal is to um, not let the quarterback get comfortable if possible. And, um, you know, and, and just basically people, you hear the term, do your job, and everybody says, do your job, and it's true. You, everybody has a responsibility. If they handle their gap responsibility in the run game or even on a blitz, when you blitz, everybody's kind of got a gap. You have to be, you have a, we call it gap integrity. If two guys go in the same gap and they spit a run in the gap, you don't have somebody. That's where the long touchdown runs happen. So even when you're pressuring people, you got to be where you're supposed to be. And, uh, there'll be times where there'll be some one-on-one -on -one matchups with great receivers and, 
and hopefully we put enough pressure on the quarterback where he can't just comfortably place the ball where he wants it. And, uh, but, uh, you know, we've, we've kind of prided ourselves on red zone defense too. I mean, people have gotten down in that area. We, we've had a high level of success down there. So if we can force field goals instead of people getting touchdowns, that'll be big as well. Coach, far left front. Mark, um, with what this game means to so many of the guys tomorrow, whether it's their last game or they want to end the drought or whatever it sure. may be, do you worry that maybe they're going to press too much or, or try to do a little too much? Or have you seen no. that, that I they're... Don't think they're... I, I think, I hope they have enough, I don't know what you call it, whether you call it nervous energy or whether you call it butterflies or whether you call it, I don't think everybody has a different name for it, but your, your heart gets pumping a little faster. Um, and and it, it's, it's, uh, it creates energy. And, uh, you know, even in the beginning, if, if something goes, uh, if a guy makes a mistake, but he's making it full speed, he's playing hard as heck, you know, I mean, okay, that happens. We can always recover. But I think sooner or later the game will always, it'll always settle into a game. Everybody's emotions will get uh, intact. I mean, you, you don't stay emotionally high every single play of a game. You just you run out of gas, you know. So sooner or later, when everything settles down, then I, I personally think what you're left with is the habits you've created your entire season, your entire career, or even the week of preparation. So that's why we work so hard on doing things right and doing them over and over to the point where um, when, when your emotions are high or low or whatever it is, you're, if you're always going to hustle because that's a habit, then that's going to happen in the game. If you always approach uh, tackle a certain way because that's a habit and that's what's going to happen in the game so you know hopefully our habits are good enough to carry us when the emotions die down a little bit in the back here uh, coach rick uh, you've been around in college football a long time and faced a lot of programs i know you faced west virginia involvement did right. your first introduction to the mountaineer program come back in conversations with coach bowden oh yeah coach bowden uh, of course we knew i mean i knew that's where he had coached, uh, I think he was a receivers coach at one time there, and, uh, or maybe it was at Florida State and he came back to be a head coach there, but I know he's head coach at West Virginia, and, and uh, you know, he had his ups and downs at West Virginia. But uh, I mean, the thing about Coach Bowden, for me, is uh, not so much where he started, but the time I spent with him, and uh, it was a huge, Blessing for me. I, I guess there's a movie has been made recently. There, I think I'm going to the debut of that movie, and I'm excited about seeing him. And from what I hear, a lot of the former coaches and players are going to be there, and we're looking forward to that. But uh, his his roots uh, were in West Virginia for sure. Up front here, Coach. Uh, you've been to, like I said, uh, Florida State and Georgia, uh, but now you're a head coach of your alma mater. How important um, you've won plenty of bowl games. Um, is this game, would this mean more to you winning uh, the bowl game as head coach of your alma mater or as you just said? Yeah. Um, it's going to be, it, it's going to be a big deal. It's a big deal. Uh, I don't know if anybody, I, I know when I was playing and when I was finishing my playing days, I didn't think I'd ever coach, let alone coach you. And, uh, you know, I mean, I was a career backup to Jim Kelly the whole time. I probably learned more about life than I learned more about, you know, being a starting quarterback or anything like that. It was a, it was a great experience for me. It was, a, it was a, in a lot of ways, a humbling experience for me. And I probably needed to be humbled at that time in my life. Uh, but Miami does mean a lot to me. And to be, um, you know, the head coach uh, and to feel the, um, the acceptance from the former players and just the community in general. I mean, I've really been blessed that way. And, I'm, and I I know there's, it's a huge responsibility and I know what everybody wants and I want it too. And uh, I think I've hired the right kind of men. I think we're getting the kind of support we need from our administration. I know our fans are rabid and excited, you know, so if we do things right, I truly believe that we'll get back to the point where, you know, mine is gonna be, you know, talked about even at a higher level than it is today. Last two questions. Anyone else? All right. Go on, go on, go on. Thank, Thank you. you.